Hi there, I'm Mark Stoiber. I was the speaker coach for the recent TEDx that was held at Royal Roads University up here in Victoria, Canada. The event was a great success. It was a wonderful time. And we want to finish it off with a little extra value for the folks who attended by actually bringing some of the speakers aboard for a quick chat to get a kind of a behind the scenes, in-depth look at what they were thinking about when they were preparing, what it was like up on stage, and what's happened since. So I want to talk today to Mark Shapiro. Welcome aboard, Mark. Thanks for having me, Mark. Honored to be here. It's easy to get our names right, at least. <laughs> um, Mark gave a fantastic talk on the power of using social media properly. In fact, I'd, I'd go so far as to say that your talk was probably the most influential based on what I saw afterwards in the audience, the way they were gobbling up what you were saying and doing what you said they should do. And we'll get into that in a second. But how did you come up with this topic? Tell us a little bit about the topic and how it came about. Yeah, sure. So it's all about social media. And I'm a firm believer that social media is in its adolescent phase right now. It hasn't been around for that long. We're looking at maybe about 10 years since people have really started using social media and Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I believe they're only scratching the surface as to how to best utilize that. And I think it's really easy to subscribe to the status quo and use it how everybody else is using it. Uh, but what I found, Mark, is in reality, there's so many tools that are available to us today that could allow us to really supercharge our relationships, perhaps create new business opportunities and create on and create relationships on new, deeper and more authentic levels. Yeah, but what you told us to do in your talk was something that is so simple. It's one of those moments where you just go, I can't believe I didn't think of it. Talk to us about that. Yeah, sure. So for the last year, I've been sending every single one of my Facebook friends a personalized video on their birthday. So it's not just for my brother or for a friend that I haven't seen in about two years. It even includes those people who I haven't talked to since grade school. So like maybe upwards of 20 years or even those people where you don't even know why you're Facebook friends with them. Like you met them maybe once, don't even remember where. But it's been a really cool thing because it's so easy to do. And it's really reinvigorated all of these dormant relationships where there hadn't been any communication in years. And people have really resonated with the videos uh, not many people out there are sending personalized videos. I, I imagine I'm not the only person in the world that's sending them to all of my Facebook friends, but I can't imagine that there are a ton of people when in reality it takes just as much time as typing in a quick message and pushing send because uh, Facebook caps the, the videos at 15 seconds if you record them within the Messenger app. Now, it's terrific because right after the show, after your talk, I saw so many people buzzing about it. It was one of the only topics that I remember folks that I talked to that they remember because it offered some awesome practical advice, which I guess would give a useful hint to anybody planning a TEDx talk. There is a lot of gold in giving people just useful advice that they can take away. Indeed, yeah. For me, I wanted to make people think. My intention with the talk was to share my story, to get vulnerable as well as, and share some personal things about myself and some of my social media fails over the years because I'm totally guilty of oversharing and phoniness and you know, many other things that I think a lot of us do like choosing our phones over each other. And so for me, I really wanted people to think about the way that they use social media to take a second and pause and reflect and then offer some additional ways that perhaps they can kind of lean in and if we're going to be checking our phones 100 times a day, if we're going to be spending four hours on them a day, which believe it or not is the average, then we might as well use them proactively in a way that both serves us, serves our friends, and serves the world. Now, what was it like getting up on stage? You, you put a lot of practice. We worked together on this for a few weeks. What was it like getting up on stage? Yeah, well, first, Mark, you were a godsend. Thank you so much for all of your amazing coaching and insight. You came up with all sorts of nuggets, things that I wanted to articulate, but I couldn't find the words. Uh, you helped me find them. So thank you for that. The whole process of writing the talk and delivering the talk, it was a marathon. So there were moments when I thought, wow, I have the opportunity to make a really big impact in the world with this talk. So I think that in one moment, 
And then on another moment, I would think, wow, this is crap. Uh, I'm not even speaking coherently. I don't know how this all flows together. No one is going to care and I'm not going to be seen, which I'll admit as a human being, like I like to be seen. I like to be valued. So it was a really scary experience for me. And it was just a roller coaster of up and downs in the two or three months as I was preparing the talk. And I remember the day before we were doing the dress rehearsal, there were probably about 15 people in the audience. There were just enough people for me to take the audience seriously. So it wasn't like there were just like two people in the audience, like working on their cameras, not paying attention. There were about 10 to 15 people in the audience and they were paying just the slightest bit of attention, but weren't really in relationship with me at all. They weren't laughing at any of my jokes. I didn't feel they were actually with me. And that pushed all of my buttons. So that inspired me to make a couple changes uh, going into the talk on the last day, including changing the title. And it made everything easier on the day of the talk because I like I went through that. I'm trying to you know, try to force it. And instead it was like, I had this amazing experience and opportunity to share my message with the world and I'm going to have a fun time with it. And that's exactly what I did. So I meditated backstage before going on. And then I put on some rock music. I was rocking out to Guns N' Roses. A lot of 80s and 90s rocks. I was pumped up, dancing around like the the back hallway, connecting with everybody who was on the Royal Roads team, giving high fives, and then I just went out and rocked it. Well, you know, it's it's crazy because a lot of people have said, a lot of speakers have said that through this experience that they've grown tighter with the other people giving talks. And I thought that was kind of cool that we we did it in a way to coaching that we use this face-to-face medium so people could see each other and kind of vet each other as they were talking. And I've had a few people say, oh yeah, we formed this sort of group, all the ladies who were doing the talks, they all came together afterwards and you know, they, they go for beers and stuff. And, and it, I, I, thought I wasn't intending for that to happen, but it did happen. So the crew actually grew closer, which I thought was a neat little side benefit. I'm not surprised. It was really a special day. Every single one of the talks was first rate. Now, um, I know that the talks are just going live on the TEDx channel right now as we speak, um, and we're going to promote them so more and more people see them. But have you noticed any sort of uh, feedback or any people coming back to you because of the talk? Because I know that you were out there talking to the crowd afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. The second that I got off the stage, someone in the audience who – Uh, puts on marketing seminars, came up to me and said he'd love to have me speak at one of his seminars. So that was uh, really cool because one of the things that I want to be doing and one of my intentions behind giving the talk was to get out there and speak more because I I love sharing my truth and some of the lessons that I've learned and being an inspiration to anyone that my voice resonates with. So that was really cool. Uh, One of the things, uh, I'm a big uh, fan of Burning Man and I was at Burning Man just a couple of weeks ago and there are a lot of people at Burning Man who I only know them from Burning Man. So I don't see them throughout the year. And I usually just see them once a year at Burning Man. So anyways, when I was there, I noticed that my relationships with people were deeper and more profound as a result of the birthday experiment. Because the only correspondence, one-on-one correspondence that we had throughout the calendar year was when I sent them the birthday video and any kind of uh, communication that we had as a result of that. So I really realized that a simple 15-second personalized video can make a relationship so much more meaningful and deeper. And if that's not a relationship-building hack, I don't know what it is. You know, it's it's funny because um, I'm reading Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, Jab, 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 Right Hook, sort of one of the Bibles of social media. And essentially what it talks about is giving, giving, giving before you ask for something. And it, it's funny that, you know, that book should fall into my hands. Now everything happens for a reason because you're a master at this. You're really good at going out there from the things that I've heard about you and from talking to you at going out and giving things to people. As a marketer, I'm not surprised at all that people want to hear you talk because it is hard for people to do it, but you just seem to do it. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate that because it's hard to get anyone to do anything or to pay attention to anything. And I've had my fair share of struggles and dating back a few years ago when I was working uh, in corporate America, I never saw a possibility where I'd have a chance to 
articulate and share my message with the world. I didn't even know what my message would be or that I could have that kind of potential or impact or the platform to do it. So uh, it's uh, really amazing to hear you say that. Thank you very much for the acknowledgement. And uh, I think just what I'd say to anyone is you know, we all have the ability to find our true story, to find our true message and to share it out and to make an impact. And uh, that's exactly what I'm aiming to do here with this TEDx talk. Let's see if we can make that talk famous. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Mark. Much love. Appreciate all of your help and support with writing and delivering the talk. I know our paths are going to cross in the future. I'll talk to you today. Nice. Much love.